All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at the idea of population genetics, uh, particularly things that can happen in populations that can drive change. And so um, let's look at this idea of chance and evolution. So there's a couple of things that, to point out here. Um, ev our evolution is driven by chance in that the things that cause it to happen are typically random. However, the result of those changes is not random. And so just like the contest here that you see in this picture, the result of this contest is not going to be random. The fact that the more fit um, individuals survive is not random. The fact that an individual is more fit than another is random, meaning that those genetic changes um, happen via mutation. Mutations are random. Those mutations are called phenotypic changes. Phenotypic changes cause adaptations. You get the idea. There are other things in a population besides mutations that can cause random change that can lead to uh, the change in a population's genetic makeup, which can change that population's course as far as uh, evolutionary history is concerned. So we're going to look at a couple of those. Um, one of those is called genetic drift. Genetic drift is a random change in a particular population. Typically, a smaller population is going to be more affected by genetic drift based on the nature of genetic drift. It's a non-selective process. So what that means is that <clears throat> the actions are not based upon um, an individual's fitness or ability to survive. There's no particular selective pressure that's going on. This is a, some sort of occurrence that takes place that is random and affects the population um, in a random way. And so we'll look at a couple of these. Uh, one of those is called the bottleneck effect. And the reason it's called this is it um, has in mind the picture of a bottle that the, towards the end it gets smaller. And if you, let's say you fill the bottle with beads um, and you try to if you try to pour them out slowly, of course, the beads will just come out. But if you turn the bottle upside down, um, they will. a few of them will come out, but then most the rest of them will kind of get caught in here at the end. And so if this particular bottle, say, is 50% blue and 50% yellow, and then you just pour some out, um, that population that is, is representative of a new population and it's going to completely change the genetic makeup. And so, so notice here, looks like there's seven and two. So what's 70, 20 um, or 70, 30, let's just say to make it easy. And so then, whereas this population is 50, 50, this one's 70, 30 through no, there was no selection that made blue better than yellow other than this bottleneck effect. And so what might cause this, this would be something like some sort of natural disaster, fire, volcanic eruption, tsunami, any number of things could cause this to occur. Um, another example of this would be something called the founder effect. <clears throat> and founder effect, same idea. It's a reduction in um, the genetic variation in a population because a small group of that population moves away from the larger group. Um, relocation, um, you could look at human populations and human migration over the course of history and see examples of this, where a small group took some sort of variation with them and led to a you know, a more a higher percentage of the total having that particular variation. Um, some sort of geologic event could occur, you know, like an earthquake or a mountain range forming or something along those lines that would isolate populations. Um, so, but this, the idea again is that you have a smaller population coming from a larger and that smaller population having a new genetic sort of makeup. Uh, another change that can happen is something called gene flow. And gene flow has to do with migration, um, has to do with uh, an individual coming into or out of a population causing the genetic makeup of that population to change. And so if you look here on the picture, you have uh, on the left, you have a population of homozygous recessive individuals 
and on the right you have a population of homozygous uh, dominant individuals and if one of those homozygous dominant individuals goes into the homozygous recessive population it is going to dramatically change the phenotypic ratio of that population over the course of several generations just by introducing the dominant allele, which is always going to express itself, of course. Uh, the recessive allele won't go away. We're going to talk about that as we talk about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. But uh, you will see more and more prevalence of that dominant allele, particularly if the dominant allele is, is selected for by nature. And so that brings us to this. <clears throat> Variation is the driving force behind evolution. Where there is no variation, there is more susceptibility to problems. There's more susceptibility to a decrease in a sudden decrease in fitness. A great example of this is the a potato famine in Ireland. In Ireland, um, they've you know potatoes were a major food food source, and they farmed potatoes, but did not farm a diversity of potatoes. And so, when a blight hit, which is a disease that affects potatoes, it killed all of them not just one particular variation killed all of them because there was no variation and this was a, a really big deal killed uh, millions of people over the course of several years because of this particular problem um you know you see them in this picture uh diversity allows some individuals to survive and reproduce which is the whole point behind uh natural selection um and evolution and so you see here at the bottom all potatoes are the same they're susceptible to blight and it causes a problem. And so again, this shows that variation in population is the driving force leads to adaptation, leads to increased fitness, which leads to that population having more reproductive success.